Well, let's speak to Kirk Volker now. He is a former US per permanent representative to NATO, and he joins us live via webcam from Washington. Uh, there's been a lot of fraught uh, reaction to the referendum result, but I understand you really think we should all calm down. Why? Well, I do. Um, you know, I think that uh, in terms of the economics, of course, there will be dislocations. There'll be adjustments that'll be made, but the UK will be quite successful as a country outside the EU, just like there are plenty of other countries outside the EU. It will take some adjustment getting there. Uh, it is a little bit more concerning to look at the future of the European Union itself. I think the EU was much better with the UK in it. And of course, it does raise some other questions about what might happen. But the idea that the French would actually vote to leave the European Union, I don't believe. Certainly, Marine Le Pen will benefit from this, maybe from 30 to 40 percent of the populace. But uh, I don't think the French will leave. And moreover, I think that what we're seeing is an expression of the public that they feel their elites, their leaders have let them down. And that's something that I hope that people take to heart and that leaders both on both sides of the Atlantic are more attentive to what the needs of their, their people are. I think that these arguments for staying in were right, but we have to pay attention to what the voters really want. You mentioned a couple of really interesting points there. I want to come back to the uh, relationship with the EU and what might happen there. Uh, the point that you made about uh, elites being out of touch with uh, the general public, I mean, the vote was so, so close. 4% uh, really in it. Um, really, does it not rather show a schism between two parts of society? Well, I would put it this way. It shouldn't have been that close. And the Remain vote should have won if people were feeling comfortable and aware of where their interests really lie. I think the economic interests, the political interests, it benefits Britain overall. But the problem is that people don't perceive that. Um, they perceive that you have both a government that has been at Downing Street, we have one in Washington, government in Brussels, if the European Union is really not paying attention to where people are hurting, where they do feel that their needs are not being looked after, and they're feeling challenges to their sense of identity, whether it's national or religious or moral or social or political, they feel that what they want and cherish is being threatened. Is and that that's where I think elites have not really uh, paid attention to that. It's so interesting because you're saying essentially that economically Britain may well be bit better off in the EU and equally the EU may not benefit from this, may be worse off for Britain leaving, but it's perception that matters. What could have been done to change that? Well, I think that it gets to leadership and I think it gets to the people who are in Brussels, the people who are in our capitals as our national leaders. Um, there does seem to be a uh, a priority put on um, the, the, the presentation, the image of a person who is a leader, as opposed to whether they are accomplishing things in government that people genuinely do care about. And there is a sense that people have an identity. We, have, we all come with a cultural, historical, a, a traditional, a nationalist heritage. And there's been a very rapid pace of change with globalization, uh, with economics, with cultural issues as well. And a lot of our publics feel left behind. And I think it's incumbent upon leaders to try to make sure that we bring people together rather than double down and say, but this is for your own good. Uh, just a brief uh, question. I don't want to let you go without talking about the security issue, something that came up a lot in yeah. the debates. I mean, what's been the reaction in America in terms of security? And, and what do you think this means for Britain in terms yeah. of uh, security in these turbulent times? Well, uh, for security issues, I think it's important to distinguish between NATO and the European Union. The European Union is a supranational organization. Countries cede some sovereignty to a central authority. Mm -hmm. NATO has never been that. NATO is always a collection of sovereign states, each of which has to make an independent decision in order for NATO to make a decision as a whole by consensus. And every member state contributes something to the collective security of the alliance. In that framework, an independent Britain, I think, will be as much an important player within NATO as a Britain was within the European Union. And remember, there are many other countries of NATO that are also not members of the European Union, not just the United States, but Canada, Norway, Turkey, and so on. Kirk, very, very interesting talking to you. We could have talked for a lot longer, but we have to leave it there. Kirk Volker, thank, thank you very you. much.